All systems are online. And after today, we'll have a fully operational desk uh, or um, base. Operational base. A fully, yes. Fully operational base. <clears throat> Hello everyone, I'm Kibitz, and welcome back to Satisfactory. Where last time we went through complete pandemonium, setting up a new super turbo fuel power system. Because we effectively found a way to turn water into oil with this super alternate recipe. And because of that, we had to change pretty much everything. So now, using about 300 and a bit oil, and a whole lot of water, we are able to produce 1,222 turbo fuel per minute, which equates to about 41,000 megawatts of power. So yeah, our power issues are not going to be an issue for long here. There's only one last thing to do, and that is set up a permanent area for all of the fuel generators we need to make. Because with all this turbo fuel, and since uh, fuel generators take 4.5 per minute, we are going to need to build 272 fuel generators. And also keep in mind, we're only using like an eighth of our fuel, so we can expand our system significantly yet. So in the future, we're gonna need an insane amount more fuel generators. Like easily over 500. And a few videos ago, I asked you guys where we should put all these fuel generators. And I gave two options. Number one, we could turn the desert back here into some Death Star-esque looking fuel generator land, which covers the entire area. Or we could continue to build up. Way, 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 way up. And oh man, brother, it was close. But thanks to all your input, it looks like we're gonna go with the Death Star route. Covering this entire desert behind our bees with fuel generators and trenches and all this crazy jazz. But don't worry, for those of you who want the base to be taller, oh brother, it will. Think of what you see before you as the foundation, because we haven't even started any actual production yet. <laughs> we just have our Mark 1 and 2 starter bases. Like, oh, this is only the beginning, brother. Oh man, but for now, we gotta get a lot of this stuff organized so we can get like permanent infrastructure built here and figure out where exactly all the pipes are going, what's going where, and etc, etc. So I quickly gotta go and do that first. Okay, cool, so I did a little bit of cleanup here. Our old turbo fuel setup is gone. The examples moved away, and all that's left that's really temporary are the fuel power plants up here, and this little plastic setup down here. I want a little bit of plastic being built in the bees so we can make computers. Because these bad boys need computers, heavy modular frames, and rubber, among other things. So we do need a little bit of that stuff right now. In the future, I'm thinking this area will become like... Hmm. It could become a temporary plastic setup, but you know what? Oh my... Oh, I'm a galaxy-brained super genius. You know what this area is gonna be? It's kind of like... A weird spot because we're unpacking a bunch of or making the fuel over there right and we don't need to make any more fuel over here but yeah 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 this is so smart this is gonna be our backup power grid right here so in case all else fails like our power grid shuts down that is like Omega super disaster like because you need enough electricity to get everything running again like to restart the grid if it went down right now We'd have to repower all of the water turbines, our extractors. The water extractors would have to go back up. All of the extractors for the oil would have to go back up. All of the pumps would have to function. Like that's like easily, easily, like 3000 megawatts. So we need like a backup power area. And this is like, this is it. Like this is it. This will be perfect. So what we're gonna do then is, is that I have a few industrial fluid buffers over here. And we're just gonna stack like, oh my god, just an insane amount of them through here along with some fuel generators. And those will be like the backup power grid. And right now, while we don't have like our main power grid online, a lot of the turbo fuel we're making is not being used. So boom, perfect opportunity to fill up a bunch of storage containers. Is it not? It is, I've answered the question. Now you know, okay. So then, yeah, this is again why we need plastic in the base like right now. We don't need a ton, but just for stuff like this, because 
The fluid buffers, they take a lot. In this system, it makes enough. So let's just grab a couple stackerinos of you brothers. And then we need some heavy mod to their frames. And I can't recall if I actually showed this or not, but on our main floor where we have like our hyper tube hubs and our like storage area, just over to the right here, I need some temporary manufacturers. So they're making like a few computers, heavy mod to their frames, and back that way, we're making a few crystal oscillators. So I just run around our world, gather what we need, put them in bins, and yeah. It's a janky setup, but it works. And we got quite the supply of these bad boys now, just for projects like this. So now we can come right down here. We can make a little bit of room and just start spamming just an obscene amount of these. So all of this, oh yeah. That is a very good backup system. All of this filled up with turbo fuel, oh yeah. That'll give us all the time in the world to restart everything. And better yet, this is pretty perfect because if we have our backup like fuel generator area over here, we have our main like power hub right next to it. So that's great, everything works out well. In fact, where's our main line? This line right here. This is our main line that goes to like our whole entire base's like on off button. So if we just had this as a double wall one now, we can connect the other side directly to this other system. So it like comes out right to there, bypasses literally everything else, and we'll probably go to about here. And yeah, now we just have to pipe this together, and then this will make for an effective plan B. Okay, now I'm feeling much better about our power situation here. So I piped up everything together, now we're loading in all these industrial buffers here. And what's just happening is the pipes go into them, the pipes go down, and then in case of emergency, we connect them up to the generators. And there are four industrial buffers to every three generators here, so these will last a long time. A long time. Like once these bad boys are filled, oh my gosh. That amount of turbo fuel, <laughs> that'll last us forever. Or like at least several hours, minimum. The only drawback here is I don't know if this is gonna be enough power. So this is a lot of fuel generators, but not really. Like, oh my gosh, can we get up there please? <laughs> uh, there's 21 fuel generators here, and that's about 3,750 megawatts of power. And now if there is a critical scenario where everything just blows up on us, I don't know if this could get everything running again, but honestly, I think we're just gonna leave it. If there happens to be a problem, with these buffers, we can always just connect on more fuel generators somewhere else, like maybe along the perimeter of our base, and we'll be okay. We'll see, this is just kind of like insurance, it doesn't really matter right now. And now that this is all set up, it is time to set up our actual turbo fuel system. So, we have one, two, three, four, five pipes of turbo fuel that are ready to head out. Right now they're going in this direction just because we have all the temporary stuff here, but we want to go to the desert behind us. So, got like two options here. Number one, we could reroute this just right over there. That seems pretty inconvenient. I think what we could just do instead is bring the pipes from this side, go over the fuel input pipes that are over here, and just go out into the distance. So we're gonna do that. And so, we'll just have the turbo fuel go through a wall right here. So we'll just have a quite a few pipes just kinda crossing the chasm here, going down the wall, and then I guess we have to figure out the platforms down here. And that's gonna be a little difficult. Because I want to make like trenches, right? And we'll probably have like the pipes in the trenches and then the fuel generators on top of the trenches. But that could be boring if it's too flat. So I kind of want to also follow the curvature of the dunes here. So you know, I guess how we could go about it is we can always have this project like be expanding. So we do like a little section today here and we'd always continue to like build on it. Okay, so I kind of got started on things here. Where we have our trench, we have like the upper area, and then the pipes are just kind of going everywhere. 
So like the idea is kind of based on this image where all the busyness is inside the trenches, whereas outside the trenches, it's pretty clean and calm. And I guess from our views in our face, we're gonna look down on this and we're just gonna see all the busy pipes moving and grooving through the trench. And then all the fuel generators on top up here. Except one other thing we're gonna be doing with this is we're gonna have different heights. So we have like this height, this height, and like lower heights. And like I said, we're gonna follow the terrain with this to add a little bit more depth. Though there is one concern here where each pipe will have about 244.4 turbo fuel per minute going through it, but I don't know exactly how they work still. Like I know the pumps, they, they increase the pressure and all that kind of jazz, but like if we have this pipeline going this way with all this turbo fuel, and then we split it up like we've done here, does 50% go that way and the other 50% go that way? Do we like load balance these pipes? Or do we just have to wait for everything to kind of like fill up before it balances out? However, I'm definitely thinking about divvying up this pipe like immediately. So we break it up into as many pipelines as we need and then we have it go down this way. Because yeah, mm, yeah, that makes a lot more sense, right? Because just having random breaks to a random amount of fuel generators doesn't really make sense, right? Yeah, that seems like the much more logical thing to do. Like this might work, like how we have it set up right now, but I find it unlikely. Okay, and quick run of the numbers, but with this amount of turbo fuel, we can run about 54-ish uh, fuel generators with that. So uh, let's see here. We need to find a cool multiple for that. And actually that was super easy. <laughs> Barely an inconvenience. But 54 fuel generators divided by three equals 18. So we'll break this pipe into three. So we'll have three pipes heading this way. And then from there, can we? Yeah, we'll just lead this off to groups of 18. Ooh, and also 18 breaks down to six, so we can split these up again into three, and things will be pretty good there too. All right, all right, this is working out. Whoa, wait a second, no, no, hold up. The power poles. What are we gonna do about the power poles then? Oh, you know what we could do? Oh my gosh, easiest answer in the world here. We don't use power poles. We have the technology. We have the wall mounted power. Just have to build the walls, of course, which will be a little tedious. But overall, it works out. It's not too bad and it fixes the issue. Easy peasy. Also, I'd rather keep the trenches pretty small like one tile wide just so it adds a little bit more depth and detail. Anyway then, let's start to build. So we start building over here, and this can be our first set of 18. All right, cool, cool, cool. This first trench is looking awesome. Lots of detail in the middle here. So go figure, the pipes actually do work in like an overflow system. So everything goes into the first machine like the most, and then the next machine a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. Same with like belts. Say we had like a row of splitters going down a line and all the items would go into the first machine the most, second machine would get a little bit more, third less, fourth less, etc, etc, etc. So since we've actually split up the main line into three, everything comes up here, splits up again, and then I even had it split up again. So everything's kind of being dispersed, not perfectly. Like I guess we can actually load balance with the pipes, but I think we found a good middle ground. Just dispersing things in a good way so that each line gets a decently equal amount of fuel. But aside from figuring that out, one little issue is we have to add in a lot more pumps if we're gonna add in the trench here. But honestly, I think it's worth it. Like it looks so much cooler. We could have everything be like on the level, like literally just bring this up to this level and have it all be flat. But this adds so much depth, like <laughs> figuratively and literally. So now as we build up and look down at this area, it'll look a lot better. Like we'll see different angles, different trenches, different systems. We'll have some belts running around too from all the miners as well. And overall, I think this is gonna be a really cool and fun project. We just really have to expand it to really get the look down though. Like just with one trench in this direction, it's gonna look like hot trash from upstairs. Yeah, it just looks like an ordinary line of fuel generators. So hindsight being 2020, we super duper wanna have the fuel generators 
vertically, not horizontally like this. So we get a good view of things. Okay, so on the small scale, this is what I'm talking about. You just see trenches full of madness, and then the rest is fuel generators. Very good. Very, very good. <laughs> but this is one full pipe of generators complete. We have four more to go, so this is kind of like the mini version. We'll probably throw in a bunch more generators right in that space, and then we'll start going out horizontally. But yeah, we won't do much vertical expansion until we start processing the rest of our oil over here. So for now, we'll just continue our work in the trenches and uh, do what we can with the turbo fuel we have available. And then see how many megawatts we got. Okay, well, good news and bad news. Good news is, oh my god, we got quite a few fuel generators now. Quite a few. In fact, that's kind of the good and the bad news is how many generators we have, because I, I made a mistake. A pretty critical mistake, and that is that the fuel generators take too many computers. And although I had set up a temporary system that I was hand feeding to make computers, this project is taking just an absurd amount. And the computer supply I've already stockpiled is gone. But at the very least, we're able to make about 110 fuel generators here, so that's a pretty good start to things, a pretty good start. And we got a real good look of how this project's gonna end up turning out. Like imagine this just everywhere. <laughs> because we need seven times the amount that you see before you. Oh goodness, yeah. This is gonna be a wild project. It's gonna be a lot of fun though. And our power issues are essentially solved. Well, for at least a little bit. But we've ended up with about 25,000 megawatts, which is good, really good for the mid game. But of course we need to make more. But this is good enough for now. And with it, we can probably start to automate computers and some other things and finally get rid of those temporary Mark I and II bases. Oh, <laughs> finally. Oh, it will be glorious. Oh man though, I really can't wait to work on this project more. Like, it's already looking so busy and amazing, and there's wires everywhere, and just all this detail is so sick. I love it. But we have to move on from it for now, and we'll get back to it later, maybe in some live streams or something like that. Or maybe I'll just go on a 10 hour binge of building power plants once we have enough computers. But kind of the next step is organizing our power grid. Because we have three main power plants now. Uh, the coal one over there. We have our uh, fuel one here. And then we have the very first coal plant that we made way over on the beaches over that way. And now we need to make sure that they're all connected to our circuit breaker. Because if you recall from a few episodes ago, we had built this room here. Our main hub is right back there. And this room is where all the power is going through our entire base. Whereas this line right here can disconnect everything. Well, at least that's what we want to have the plan be. So in case there's a critical power issue, like we have to flip the circuit breaker switch on the left here, we have an option to like just cut everything, disconnect certain sections, and tear the factory back to life. And I'll be honest, our power grid is only kind of semi-organized right now. Like, I haven't made it much of an issue, or something I've been worried about until this point, because we haven't had much permanent stuff in our entire world. But now, we do need to worry about it. So right now, all the fuel generators go right down here. This is their power line, and it hooks up to this main line. That goes to that main circuit breaker way up there. And now we have to make sure all of the other power sources connect up too. Right, Mr. Bean? Right. So let's find out where that coal power is going. Well, lucky for us, it happens to be going down this old hypertube highway. So this is what I was using before to kind of work on that project back down there. But now we can kind of get rid of this and replace it with fuel generators. However, the power line that's still here can still be quite useful now, can't it? Because this is the only power line that's going all the way over there, brother. So, let's just find a random power plug right here. Sure, why not? Put the post on right next door. Hook it up. Cut this line and go from there. Now of course the scary thing about reorganizing a power grid is 
You don't know exactly what you're cutting off and where you're cutting it off at. So that's what I'm scared about. I think we might have just cut off our steel plant right now though. I don't think we had another power line going over there. Well actually, no, apparently we did. This thing's working. That means that's working over there too. Oh and I see, uh huh 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 huh, yeah. This is going over that way. Hmm, that's not gonna do, brother. That's not gonna do. So, well, we'll delete it after, but for now it'll be useful. What I actually wanna do though, is I wanna have all of our transport belts that go like out of our base have power lines on them. And that way we can organize the power grid very simply. In fact, it's looking like that's what I've already done here. This is good. Well, almost good. Why? Why do I do this to myself? I brought it all the way here, but then I just didn't connect it up there. Why? Oh, past kibitz, why, why you do this to yourself? Well, it's an easy job. We just hook that up there. Now we go upstairs. And then we sneak that power into this area. Cool. So that's one problem solved. Let's rock and roll and check out our starter base area and see how bad the situation is over there. Oh, and Lord Atlanta, this is why I want to get rid of the Mark 1 and 2 starter bases. It is a mess over here. An absolute mess. Like, where does it, it where does anything begin? It's like a web. Ay, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, hmm. There should be a simple solution here. We already have belts going over to the water packaging area. So why don't we just put up a power line there? Yeah, 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 yeah. And then we could just have, yeah, yeah, okay, okay, okay. And then we can lead the power from like the waterfront there back to the beast and then to the beast to this temporary area. And boom, we're set. Okay, so I got the power poles over here at the waterfront and I ran them through this area right here. So this is where we have our, just our water pumping station. And you know, I was gonna connect it up to this power area, but I, I'm thinking of just leaving it and not having it attached to our main grid. And like, I'll be honest, I'm kind of thinking of just destroying it because I kind of want that coal. Like now that we have so much fuel power, we can do so much with steel. And oh brother, I want the coal. I want it real bad. So I don't know. Uh, you guys let me know in the comments if we should keep it for sentimental value or get that tasty, tasty coal. Either or, I'm good with it. Uh, for now though, we're just gonna have the power go like that just to the water area here. And then we'll kind of leave this be. Because now if we just connect one line from our main base over to the starter bases, that reroutes the power the way I want it, meaning we are all good. So we'll just grab the power from over here. We will make an absolute show of it. There we go. <laughs> These things are pretty hard to miss. There we are. And we connect this up literally anywhere and we are good to go, right? Is there literally any power? There you go, thank goodness. Okay, good. And that brings us back onto the grid. Fantastic. So that means our circuit breaker's all good to go. Our mid-game power grid is online. And now we are finally ready to ascend from the age of filth. However though, that's gonna be all for today. So if you enjoyed, please remember to leave a like and I hope to see you in the next video. But have a fantastic rest of your day and bye bye <laughs>